Hey you guys, what's up? My name is Tequisha. This is our freedom song and today I'm going to give you a look at what is growing in the garden. Right now it's about 30 degrees out here. That's at least the real feel. Um, last night it got down to 29 so I don't know what the real feel was but I know it was cold. <laughs> I have not been into the garden yet I'm going to take you with me and we're going to look at it together. First, I want to show you what is growing inside the greenhouse. First, let's start with these peppers because these peppers came into the greenhouse to be overwintered. I removed all the leaves and all the things um, from this batch and I placed these up on the shelf. I am going to be moving these down to the floor so that they could stay um, more warm down there. but. I just came out here yesterday and picked some peppers off of this plant. As you can see, we still have some little babies. I don't know if they're going to survive, but it's wild to see them still producing after being in the greenhouse for over a month now. Here are the pepper plants that we are overwintering and I did bulk overwinter them. And I don't know if that's going to be a great method or not, but I'm hoping for the best. <laughs> Definitely add some nice aesthetic to the inside of the greenhouse for sure. There's this one tomato plant that I found out in the garden that survived. And interestingly enough, there's a carrot. <laughs> and so I have no idea. I see some things popping up in this soil, but yes, this came from right from out of the garden and along with other ones that didn't survive but this one seems to be going strong I don't know how much longer it will last as you can see our citrus trees are growing leaves again as well even though I harvested all the leaves they grew back because we've been having such warm days they're like "Woo! yes let's do this so they are trying to survive in here in the greenhouse. I'm going to be moving them down as well. This is our lemongrass, y'all. And it's so crazy because it has been living its best life in here in the greenhouse. I harvested all of our lemongrass. And as you can see right here, I put it in here to dry. <laughs> and so um, it decided that it still had more life to give this season in the greenhouse, like I said, because the days have been so warm. So we'll actually get another harvest. I'll go ahead and harvest the rest of this lemongrass and that'll be an extra bonus. So I'm excited about that. So in the corner here, I have our stevia plant which I put in here so that it can continue to go to seed and it looks like it has. And so that's really exciting. It's just been in here drying out. This trash right here is because look at this. So I wrapped all of these in plastic and they are growing. They are growing so beautifully. This is the only one that did not germinate at all. And so I would definitely say it's probably the seeds, but we have a good bit of germination on all of the rest. There is not much going on over here on the propagation station. It was getting so hot in here, y'all. These things was like not very happy. So now that you see what is growing and going on in the greenhouse, let's go ahead and head out and let me show you these carrots. Look at these beauties, y'all. These are gorgeous. It makes me so happy to see it. I am really actually so mind blown at how full this pot is but say like the bigger pot like how it just has a few sprouts or this one that's growing much more slowly as well and yes this one just has the one carrot in it <laughs> but yes it is amazing i'm just so happy to see carrots growing 
the same thing over here beauty 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 but then we get to this little pot <laughs> and they're so teeny and tiny and they were all planted at the same time I'm excited so excited we also have some carrots growing right here in this pot as well as in the pot right next to it there's more carrots in this pot i actually covered it with more compost so those leaves will pop up sooner or later the area right to the left side of the greenhouse is the area where our fruit trees are planted as well as where our perennial garden will be. I'm planning to cultivate this perennial garden sooner than later. I'm so excited. I have all of my thoughts together. I know how I want it to look. And so that will be coming soon. We are slowly going to be transforming this space into yes, another garden area. All right, so let's head into the garden. To see what we can see. Okay, so we have some little sprouts here. This is definitely a cabbage. Because of the warm weather, any seeds that dropped inside of this soil is trying to sprout up now. We have some green onions. We have some kale. This is another cabbage. And look at that little cabbage. Trying to grow and be great. Right now we don't have much planted in the back of the greenhouse other than this hydrangea. I am excited about how beautiful she's going to look in the spring. <laughs> I just spotted this. This is definitely a potato. <laughs> we had potatoes planted here right before we built the greenhouse. Yes, we forgot one because there's a definitely a potato growing under there. <laughs> Beauty right here is a canna lily and I did grow this one from seed. A sweet lady, I think her name was Miss Penny. Um, I remember last year I received some seeds from her. And so Miss Penny, if you are watching, look, I actually did plant those canna lilies. <laughs> So we have some of our sweet peas growing in this bed. They are looking so beautiful. We have some cabbage. I'm always amazed when in one bed, you plant the same things throughout the bed and in some areas of the bed, they grow a lot faster. I'm seeing that in several of the beds in the garden and that really has me thinking and considering what I want planted in the bed before I plant brassicas. These poor guys have been waiting to be planted for a while and it's frozen. So it's definitely frozen out here. <laughs> the soil is frozen, y'all. Okay, so I'm going to need to plant these soon i want to plant them in the green stock i was waiting until i harvested all of our radishes from there and then i was going to stick these in so i just may need to do that today and over here we have some cabbage this brussels sprout right here and another cabbage along with our sugar snap peas So our next two beds are empty. This one has a bag inside of it, but <laughs> it is growing some carrots. We are growing some carrots in this grow bag. 
the reason why I have these empty is because I am planning to do I believe that I'm planning to do two flower beds that was my plan when I put the beds here so we'll see how that goes it's so funny so many things have been trying to grow out of the wood chips like a uh, cucumber there's a zinnia right there <laughs> seeds definitely just want to grow okay so next we have the blue bed right here growing we have some brassicas and um, some lettuce in this bed so this right here that is our Brussels sprouts so when I say brassica if you're unfamiliar with that that is a family of um, vegetables so that's your broccoli and your cauliflower and your cabbages all of those um, vegetables are in the brassica family and so when I first started gardening, I had no idea. And <laughs> I just remember hearing people interchange um, the terms and I had no idea what that meant. And so if you did not know that, that is what that means. These did get knocked back way down. This was eaten all the way to the bare minimum and it grew back. And then the other day I did come out here and I saw that we had cabbage aphids which was a whole thing and I sprayed them off. So hopefully with the cold weather, we will have less pest pressure. But none of the pests like the lettuce, right? They're like, no thank you. I just love how beautiful this red mustard is. It's so gorgeous. Okay, so next up right beside it in our file cabinet planters, we have cabbage and with the warm weather, it, we just had such a high pest pressure. It was wild. But things are growing back. They're bouncing back nicely. And so that's a good thing. The kids and I would be out here and um, they would come and help me find the worms. <laughs> now there are so many things that you can use to cover your plants. And dependent on the size of your garden, it may be more difficult than not and to cover all of the things. In my opinion, we have a pretty large garden and so buying something to cover all of the plants just wasn't in the budget. So we had to stick with our um, methods of coming out here every day and trying to squish all the bugs but hopefully over time we'll be able to build up the tools that we need in order to make it easier on ourselves to protect from the pest pressure on the brassicas next fall and i just want to note some of the holes are from pest pressure but some of them are because we have pine needle torpedoes falling from the trees and ripping through the plants <laughs> and so that's actually a thing okay so let's keep it moving this is our blueberry tree and in the spring i am going to be planting that in the ground i'm going to find a good place for that to go here's some more cabbages that i just have in this pot because i really ran out of places to put it but it's like even in this pot the soil is frozen and so i hope they can survive this weather <laughs> so next up in this bed we have more cabbage and more sweet peas y'all this is actually the bed that i recently pulled out our other peas which were called the early pea that were attracting the moth that lays the yellow egg y'all <laughs> those had to go And in this bed right across from it, we have more cabbage. This one really took a beating. 
it was so hard to find that worm y'all like we was out here they are just so crafty when it comes to <laughs> or talented when it comes to blending in we eventually did find the worm and so I think we're good <laughs> this right here is a broccoli and if you guys remember when I put that broccoli in, it was the teeniest little thing and I didn't know if it was going to survive. And here it is. I have some more sweet peas growing over here. And they are gorgeous. That is the last bed in our container garden section. So everything over here is what I consider our container garden. And now we're gonna move over into the section of the garden where things are planted in ground. Our only exception are the two beds, those two white beds over there, because obviously it's a container. <laughs> but it is accessible to the ground underneath. It's like a whole story over here. This whole entire section was bamboo. 30, 40, 50 feet high, up to 70 feet. Like it, it was so high as far as this was a bamboo jungle and we dug it up and laid down um, some really thick plastic and then covered it with wood chips so that we could smother it out so nothing in this area has access to the ground so I just wanted to clarify that <laughs> so although those two beds are above the ground um, there's nothing covering the actual ground so it could grow deep roots into the soil over there okay so let's talk about these beautiful peas right here aren't they gorgeous <laughs> we are going to go ahead and harvest um, a lot of these because they need to be harvested it was so interesting because the peas grew on this side and then they missed a section right here and they're starting to grow over here, but that's just so bizarre. It's amazing. Thinking back to what was planted before we planted the sweet peas. Now we did have tomatoes all along here. And we also had tomatoes on this side as well. And these sweet peas have grown in so beautifully. I was so excited about the thought of walking in and seeing so much green, even in the fall and winter. My hands are freezing. <laughs> My hands might be too cold to be able to pick, um, to harvest nicely. <laughs> and decent and in order harvest these peas no I'm thinking stir fry for dinner tonight I gotta put these in something see how filled we can get this
the same variety, but some are flat and some are fat. Okay, this is what we got. I'm excited. Yes. This is plenty enough to make a delicious meal. Okay, let's go explore the rest of the garden. So this right here is asparagus and I am going to be pulling this up I'm thinking <laughs> and putting it in our perennial garden because the asparagus is something that will continue to grow and so I really want to have a special space I'm debating rather to pull this up or just plant all new asparagus in the perennial garden but it will definitely be over there this is more cabbage So I am I am refraining from eating a garden snack because I don't want to be crunching in y'all's ear. <laughs> okay, so these four beds are pretty much put to sleep um, for now. I decided to just cover them, to mulch them heavily and we will plant again in the spring here's some rosemary we also had this kale that grew back from last year so there's one and there's two looking like a tree i did plant some field peas over here to amend the ground to impart some nitrogen in there and so that's what you see here is those field peas coming up in this bed, you see some rosemary, and I also have some red clover planted in this bed as well. And they are serving as green manure. That's what it's called whenever you plant something, you cut it down and you fold it into the soil. It just helps build up your soil. So that's what we have over here. I won't forget this corner and another one of our file cabinet planters we have some greens planted over here some collard greens and they are doing very well our green stalks are looking beautiful as always we do have some radishes in here Oh, yeah. Looking beautiful. Mm. 
I'm just going to pull out what I can. So cute. And they're so good. I never knew I liked radishes, y'all, until I grew them. After growing them and tasting them, I'm like, wow, they taste so good. And I've had them sauteed and I feel like it adds such a wonderful flavor to our dishes and I really like them. These are the French breakfast radishes and they, they do have a mild flavor so they aren't spicy. But cooking them might take out the spiciness of a radish as well. And I don't know many people who cook radishes, but y'all, I'm telling you, go ahead and chop those things up and put them, <laughs> put them in that dish, especially uh, uh, greens mixed in. So good. And sweet potatoes, man. So this is where I am planning to plant those cabbages. I want to plant them right in this top tier of the green stock. So this is our choy. It is growing back. I did chop it down and saute it. And as you can see, that's where those baby leaves are. They're growing back from where I cut it. This is sesame. We have some more of that red mustard right here. So tasty. And this is our red Russian kale. Here in this green stock, I believe this is called blue kale. And then we have some another variety of kale. <laughs> here is some spinach um, and another variety of spinach. This right here is our greens. That's collard greens right there. And look y'all, I popped a couple of those carrots in here and they are growing. <laughs> and so I'm loving seeing the little carrot sprouts. Lots of, of our spinach is growing back from its hair cut. All looking very beautiful. Okay, so in this bed we have cabbage as well as carrots. And this bed is a very good example of what I was telling you guys. When you plant the same size plant in a bed and in different spots, it grows differently. This is a prime example. All along the side of this bed, I had green beans planted, which we know imparts nitrogen into the soil. These cabbages are heavy feeders and they love nitrogen. Carrots don't need nitrogen like um, these cabbages. Carrots, they need more like phosphate. And so um, their needs are different from the, from the cabbage, but it's amazing that green beans are planted along here. And these are our biggest cabbages. In the front was basil. This and this right next to each other, you can see the difference. It's huge. It's such a huge bit difference. But as we go further back into the back of the bed, you will see even more something so shocking. Look at this little teeny tiny plant. And look at the cabbage. The cabbage is so small. And on this back row, I had tomatoes planted. I just find that so interesting that the size difference where the tomatoes were planted is huge. It's definitely noteworthy. Y'all know I'm so excited about seeing these carrots grow. <laughs> I was, oh my goodness, I was just so fixated on figuring out how to get carrots to grow and they are growing and my heart is so happy <laughs> to see all of this beautiful growth. In the bed right across from this one, we have lots of greens and cabbages growing in this bed. We also have some beets. Look at how beautiful everything is looking. There's only one in this bed that got severely attacked. 
right here. But we found we found the worm, and um, it took a while, but we found it. So hopefully, everything is good. <laughs> Hopefully all of these beauties can grow well. right behind this bed and this area right over here. This is where we have all of our onions and garlic planted. And I did come over here and add some more, more leaf mulch to this area because everything was sprouted because of our warm weather. I'm so excited about this area because it's filled. It's filled to capacity with onions and garlic, and my heart is happy just knowing that. And I'm thinking we're gonna have better success in this spot than we did last year. My hopes are high for sure. Well, that is it for the tour today. I hope that you guys enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed that and that you are enjoying watching all of these things grow along with me. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for joining me today in the garden. I will see you guys next time.